Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom professionals. I'm Carl Sketchley, and joining me today is Mr. Eric Highland, Program Manager for Acclaim at Legrand. Welcome, Eric. Hey, Carl. How's it going today? Good, good. Let's dive right in. So Legrand, yeah. it's a big global brand that is known for being a leader in electrical and digital building infrastructure and connected solutions but it also has its own division known as Legrand Data Power and Control. Can you tell us more about what inspired Legrand to create this division and what your team is trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as you said, Legrand, giant company, uh, lots of different facets, lots of different brands that fall underneath it. Um, data Power and Control, DPC, is uh, really focused on just the data center, right? So we have all these great innovative strings right so to gather them all together are arrows right and to gather them all into one quiver to focus on data center space is is what the the goal of dpc is and so we we take all the different pieces and innovative subsections and try to put them in a house right and so everything that isn't a switch a router or a server falls under that encompass you know uh, under the umbrella of uh, the DPC. And so my my personal focus within that is on the connectivity side of things, specifically in the fiber optics connectivity side of things. And more specifically, <laughs> Acclaim is really the focus of connectivity within fiber optics within the data center space, although really fiber optics everywhere, but data center is where this kind of was born from. So uh, that's, that's, that's where I sit and kind of how Legrand silos out and, and plays you know we're happy to play well with everybody with all the different pieces but to give us some direction and some functionality dpc is specifically more around the data center space awesome well thank you for that insightful answer uh now let's talk about legrand infinium acclaim a relatively new product that redefines fiber cabling connectivity uh, by replacing pre-terminated cassette based solutions with direct mating breakout connections so what makes this innovation a big deal for our viewers, Eric, many of whom are in the mission critical and data center industries? Uh, you know, maybe just tell us the top three big takeaways a data center sure, executive sure. should know about this product right off the bat. Yeah, I think um, from, from a, like an overall connectivity perspective, right? Like we came, <laughs> fast history lesson. 30 years ago, cassettes were invented, right? In the early 90s, if you took brave people and said, how fast are we going to go in 30 years? How fast are we going to go in 50 years from a bandwidth perspective? They would panic, get wide-eyed and say, I don't know, 10 gig, right? And like, we're now in this space where we're casually having conversations around 100 gig and 400 gig and planning for 800 gig and 1.2 terabyte. And so, you know, we've got this infrastructure that, was designed 30 years ago and the best it was ever going to have to do was 10 gig right and like we're now blown way past that and so we're we're seeing you know infrastructure as a whole as an identity if we do our job right we're forgotten about you know we're, we're in the business of down is the dirtiest four letter word and so having stuff that you now have to pay attention to when you're deploying new things and building new architectures um kind of defeats the purpose of being forgotten about. And so like it's an opportunity for innovation to happen, right? We're we're there to enable connectivity. We're there to enable the evolution on the edge and the evolution on the edge has now gotten to the point where it's asking for things that stuff designed 30 years ago isn't able to support. And so, you know, what that kind of turns into as far as punctual things is, you know, lost budgets are important now. Lost budgets are more important than they ever have been. So paying attention to loss and how loss is created and then improving upon it is important. But anything that's new can't be scary. It has to be approachable. So like as an overall design, we need simplicity to be part of that deployment as well. And so, you know, having space for it to be easy to deploy, easy to think about and easy to kind of touch and how it feels and also like what it's doing from a breakout perspective is important and impactful, right? And it also has to be fast, <laughs> not only from a bandwidth perspective, but from a deployment standpoint. So like we want something that 
takes into consideration not just our tree of like connectivity, but looks at the whole campus and forest of what we're actually plugging into and how that works and thinking about what the transceivers are and where they talk to each other and how they talk to each other and what they're supporting. And so um, it's a really long way to say the three things are, uh, you know, we're able to do a simplicity from a design perspective as well as a connectivity perspective. Uh, and, and then also um, what and how those interactions happen and what they and how they behave with one another. So interesting. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, and I like that you said that it's not just about, you know, it, it is about simplifying and speeding installations, enabling the higher density deployments as well. Uh, but I think one of the points you touched on was that it's also about offering the industry's lowest optical loss by a significant margin. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that? Like, how does the Infinium Acclaim product enable that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in a word, it's alignment, right? Like we have this big impending doom coming from an optical standpoint of like bandwidth is always increasing, right? And, um, you know, I like to think about how light moves through fiber optics the same way that water moves through a garden hose. And so, you know, bandwidth is just an increase in pressure. So like if you've got a garden hose in your backyard and you screw another garden hose into it, like water wants to leak out, right? And that's the same thing with how light behaves in fiber optics. There's always looking for a reason and a way to escape. If you take that garden hose off the back of your house and plug it into the fire hydrant down the street, that's kind of like where we go from, you know, 100 gig to 400 gig to 800 gig. And so we're just increasing that pressure so much that that little leak in the backyard becomes a massive pond, right? And like just to really kind of pull on this analogy, each droplet of water that doesn't make it, it's in that pond is information that didn't make it to the other end. And while computers are really good at making guesses about things, they still need a bit of the puzzles put together before they can say what the picture is. Um, this all goes back to that's what we're seeing from like a panic perspective. But the reason that happens is because we built stuff that was never supposed to support that pressure. So like the where that falls apart, where that starts being a consideration, where we start looking at that is at the alignment part, right? So like that phrase direct mating breakout is really just ensuring that individual strands of fiber are aligned perfectly and aligned in a way so that they can are set up for success from a transfer and throughput perspective. Um, you know, to get a little bit more into the technology, things that worked in the past still work now. Fiber still works as fiber. LC connectors still are the cleanest, best way to terminate a fiber so that you have ensured directionality and loss and throughput is, is minimalized. So like all that Acclaim is doing is taking LC ferrules from the trunk side in a high density situation and aligning them with the LC ferrules that are on the patch cord side of things and that MDC connector so that individually those fibers are set up for success, right? And so paying attention to alignment has gotten us to be able to say with confidence that our overall loss throughout the infrastructure is, you know, 0.4 dB where everybody else is performing around like the best anyone else is hoping to do is like dot seven five ten channel, right? So that's not insertion loss, but full from transceiver to transceiver. So the whole way, the whole pathway from one end to another with a claim is dot four where the best performing cassettes are dot seven five. And like that difference because it's that, you know, dB because it's logarithmic is like, puts us in that place where we're pretty safe to say 3.2 terabyte isn't scary. Not that it's theoretically even a thing that most people are talking about right now, but like that's the kind of, you know, the last thing we did lasted 30 years. The next thing we do should at least last that long. Right. And it's like, we're in a position now where we can start being excited about that kind of innovation in a space that is often forgotten about. Yeah, that is so exciting. I mean, that is a significant uh, upside of this product. It sounds like, so, I mean, Probably our viewers think, wonderful in theory, where does the rubber meet the road? Uh, we've heard that Infinium Acclaim has actually supported some very big names in the industry, one of them being uh, Cisco. Uh, in fact, I think that this product actually played a pretty crucial role in supporting last year's Cisco Live event. So can you tell us a bit more about the role that Acclaim played there and uh, you know why that success was really important? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that overall this is a brand new idea right so like we launched in april it's not quite a year old yet but we are seeing successes immediately from the people who care right for for the people who are looking for the agility of a pre-terminated solution but need that 
support and that performance from something that's, uh, you know, anecdotally, some of our better individual connections are equal to a splice connection. So like having splice level performances in fiber that is a pre-terminated solution from an agility standpoint uh, matters. And for the people it matters to, usually it's those bigger fun names, right? And for, for Cisco Live, Cisco uh, may be a surprise to some viewers. I don't probably think it's really a surprise to any of them. Likes to own all the connectivity in their uh, in Cisco Live, in their different events, right? So like they bring to the event their own knock with their own you know servers and everything else, and and all the connectivity that lives there is Cisco connectivity. Um, so we worked with them to help build and design a full new deployment that is sits inside of a container right and so they can ship it to all the different places and for them it was really impactful and important to have something they could unplug and plug back in quickly because they're tearing stuff down and moving on to the next one at a pretty high rate of speed so having something that guarantees performance to support all those people walking around and all the different things that are plugged in but still allows for a quick move <laughs> onto the next one was right. really um, important to them. And, and it allowed us to really kind of flex our muscles and show how different this architecture is, but how it still is sim simple to get out into the world and kind of interact with. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, this product sounds like such a win for the industry. It's technically astute. It's innovative. It enables agility. So what's ahead for Infinium Acclaim? Uh, you yeah. know, I, I think in the run up to this interview, we heard that there may be a new suite of additional developments ahead for the product. Are you able to tell us anything more about that? Yeah, absolutely. This is, this is one of those things that's really fun, right? Like it's a brand new thing. So like we came out with the beginning ideas of what this is and like, I don't want to say the bare minimum, but change is hard and new things are scary. And so we want this all to be approachable. And so like, having a deployment plan is important not only for how this is going to go into your infrastructure but also how we're going to talk about this out in the world and how we're going to release our you know wobbly baby deer out into out into nature right and so you know, the the next steps in this are really twofold one like we know what we want from a connectivity standpoint we know what we want from a footprint standpoint um, you know, the initial version of this is something that was very modular that plugged into our existing uh, enclosures and, and panels and things. And so the next step is, what can we really do? Like this, this as an individual piece is very small, right? And so the connector itself has a lot of agility and the, the conversion adapters have a lot of agility and where they can sit in the infrastructure um, and to get a little boring for most everybody, apologies. But there gives us some spaces for us to really start playing around with what connectivity and what cable management looks like in an enclosure, but also out of an enclosure. So like, you know, there's this idea of zero U, right? Like let's give all the rack space back to the compute and storage and do all the connectivity off to the side somewhere. And so having a smaller, more agile footprint allows for us to start playing with like what zero you looks like and integrating it into our cabinets and into our, you know, Legrand again, giant company, like part of DPC and everything else is that we build cabinets and enclosures and, and racks and, and whatnot. So like we can start integrating this footprint into the rest of the physical space so that the compute and storage can be totally occupied in all the RU. Um, and that falls out in a lot of different ways, but probably from like how that's exciting and what that conceptually can look like and where that flexibility comes from um, more <laughs> like directly, it's different different types of adapter panels, different types of patch panels. Um, you know, we can get some densities. We can get 384 fibers in a one RU space, which has some pretty interesting uh, applications for, you know, large data centers, but also cross connects and everything else. And so, um, really just kind of taking customer feedback and, and turning that into products that are necessary and impactful to them. Uh, and also a little bit of that Jurassic Park dancing on the edge of what we can do versus what we should do a little bit, right? And just kind of taking that into, into consideration and making sure that, um, 
we're having fun. Innovation in this space doesn't happen very often. So like we're excited about it. We're excited to push what the boundaries are as far as what this means and what flexibility can come out of this as a, as a concept uh, all the way from start to finish. Very exciting, very exciting. And I think this is such a great uh, way to um, introduce Legrand and your team to our viewers here today. Uh, so one final question for me, how can our viewers get in contact with your team if they want to learn more about Acclaim or obviously any of the other wealth of solutions that Legrand offers? Yeah, uh, so Legrand giant uh, presence, right? Like we are a global company, probably the cleanest way I'm not knowing quite where all your audience is located, right? The cleanest way to do this is it's it's a little bit of a cop out, but probably going to the website, right? And um, if you go to legrand.us, if you're if you're in the U.S. Um, and legrand. whatever country you're in, otherwise, you're just legrand.com, and then you'll get driven wherever you are. And then if you put in backslash acclaim, that'll take you right to the acclaim landing page, um, and you, there's more information there and, and ways to contact your local local uh, acclaim people and legrand people for for the rest of it. So. Um, yeah, legrand.us slash acclaim, probably the cleanest way to do it. Um, and things will find their way to me. <laughs> we'll Perfect. end up having a conversation at one point or another, but that's probably the, the safest way to make sure that everyone's covered from start to finish. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for joining us today. And obviously, thank you to all our viewers for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned for more episodes down the line. And as always, happy networking. Thanks, Carl. Thank you.